every day I wear makeup for other people. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not going to try to do my own lame bars, but someone here has done that. His name is Kunle Ido, popularly known as Frank Donga, comedian, actor, journalist. In fact, it's time for us to find out which came before which and what he cannot do because the thing is you do everything. The chicken or the egg, which one? Which one came first? Which one came first? He's the farmer. That's what they don't know. <laughs> He is the farmer that came first. <laughs> Frank. Leave story for the people. <laughs> so we have with us Frank Donga, our second celebrity guest today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you very you. much, ladies. So I think we should actually ask that question. So you've been a journalist, you're a farmer, comedian, actor, comed... Okay, I've mentioned comedian earlier. Frank of Broadcaster. Well, we just found out that he sings. Yeah, sings and raps. <laughs> of course, he just dropped the new single, which we are going to play before the end of this interview. Question is, what can you not do? I can't lie to you. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so which one started first? Run us through your journey. Okay, so I went to school, studied uh, agriculture from, uh, well, the tree, don't tell anybody. Okay. Because I bought admission form for Ogo State University, but before we passed out, you know, it changed the name to Alabi Senabanjo, so it's now OU. So I have two universities for so my first degree. Ogun State and Alabi Senabanjo. But that's, I studied agricultural sciences, majored in animal production, did my master's degree in the University of Ibadan, studied uh, animal genetics. Uh, I was going to start my PhD in molecular genetics, but then media called me. So I got my first job in Lagos. I just saw this job at bat online because I was a complete internet freak. I was crawling all over Is the place. Is that the media calling you there? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, nice one. <laughs> I picked the call, I picked the call. So, you know, I got, saw this job opportunity that said I was starting a new Pan African media platform. In 300 words or less, tell us why we should hire you. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do that. You know, 300 words. <laughs> Type, and then I called me for the interview, like, woo. I wasn't expecting that. Came for the, I was living in Badon. That's where my, I'm from. That's where my parents are. So I, I came to Lagos, did the first interview, passed through the second stage, and like got, eventually got the job in a, um, a CNN affiliate a news station. And that was how I started my journey. We were trained by the former vice president of CNN and a whole bunch of experts. And then I did tons of hours, just tons of hours of, of um, tutorials online to add to my skill and practicing how to use the camera, editing, special effects. I love animation. I watched loads of cartoons. I'm an illustrator. Uh, yeah, that's that. But before then in school, you know, just I learned how to play the guitar, the lead guitar, the bass guitar, and the keyboard. I, I used to write songs. You are too proud. Speak about being multifaceted. <laughs> too proud. I didn't make really this show. Now. What kind of thing is this? I didn't Why that. are you trying to interview Now you ask question, now. Nah. You are a Baba Lao too, I'm sure. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what? So, but, but really, I was just, I, I, I was at that stage of my life, I just wanted to explore as many things as I could because I knew. I kept remembering these words my father used to tell me. Each time I'm with a piano, small woods, piano tutor. Or, bam, 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 bam. my father would look at me and say, wow, I remember when I was younger, like you, I wanted to learn how to play the piano. I said, so what happened? I just never did. And I could see the regrets in his eyes. And I told myself, never, never, if I want to go to the moon, I will call a visa, I will run to America and say, yeah, I mean, put me in national school. I just, that period of your life, you want to do, learn as much skills as you can. And I think that's what I did. And out of all the skills that you have learned, that you now have today, what would you say you are most passionate about? People. I love to see people smile. I love to see people happy. That drove me to all the things I do. I wanted to produce food. I've been a farmer in agriculture. I wanted to produce food to make people eat well. I didn't just want to become a farmer. It takes a lot for you to see you have opportunities to study engineering, architecture, uh, medicine, and say, I want to be a farmer. Something must be really cuckoo in your head. My friends thought I was, you know, losing my marbles. So like, I want to be a farmer because I could see I loved agriculture. I loved. I wanted to produce food to feed people. Then I realized that, uh, you know, I did certain things, certain ways, and my classmates, my friends, and family, neighbors would laugh easily. They're like, "Oh my God, it's so funny!" Even when I don't see the funny in it, I'm like, okay. So I think my passion for people drives me to do all the things I do. It keeps me doing what I do right now, doing skits online, doing movies, releasing. I love to entertain people. Okay, now you also played farmer. You had the opportunity to be yourself, to be a farmer in the movie you played last year, Hakunde, an award-winning one. So yeah. congratulations on oh, that. Thank right. you, thank you. Okay, now let's talk about your journey into movies. Mm. Was it a mistake? Did you escort someone to go and do audition and stop going to call you? 
No, they will call me. They called. <laughs> I know it sounds, it sounds weird now. Like, <laughs> why are you feeling pompous? No, yeah, pompous. Please, please, so oh, I'm not so. Please, I'm not. <laughs> but the thing is this. So I, I started off, uh, I was working with an online TV platform and with a few friends of mine, Mohamed Atta, Femi Bangbeton. And we, you know, accidentally, I would, I would say things. These are guys who were way back. We, we, we first met when I worked at a news channel I talked about. And then we found ourselves working together in another company. And I would say stuff. And boys would be on the floor rolling, literally holding their sides and rolling. I'm like, what's so funny? The way you said it. Look at your face. I'm like, I don't, I don't get. But then one day I said, we should record some of these things and, you know, put it online and see how it goes. And yeah, yeah, we should. We never did. Until that faithful that happened to be wearing that shirt and that tie, you know. And I said a few things. Boys were on the floor. and like, what's so funny? Okay, get the camera, get the mic, get the sound, get the lights. Let's record this thing. Almost accidentally. Wow. So do you record and edit all your videos? Yeah, for the most all, part. For the most including part. the ones where you are the pilot, Donga. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, wow. I have so, a team of people that I take uh, pieces of advice, for, advice from, a uh, team of people that I need help from. For example, that pilot one, for instance, I struggle for a long time trying to get the right background picture. So there's no magic to what I do. It's simple compositing. Green screen with a background image. That background image I searched online endlessly, I couldn't find. Until one day I was coming from, I think, Port Harcourt to Lagos, and I met a pilot who recognized me in the airplane and said, Is that not Frank Donga? Bring him to the business class. And from the economy class, we had a chat, and I told him, Oh, wow, uh, I need this kind of picture. And he said, Yeah, take a picture right now. And I didn't like it. He said, I'll take it and send it to you. And he sent it to me, and that happens to be. So shout out to, Pax, uh, to pilot T. Jan, you know, wherever you are. <laughs> Those of, so, yeah, so simple. Brilliant. You put your heart to it. And you yes. meet the right people. Interesting. Now, freedom, and, uh, freedom of speech and freedom of expression obviously are a fundamental human right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are scared mm. in Nigeria when it comes to liberating themselves through speech and expression because of the responses they may get. Mm. Have you had any negative responses? And I'm speaking of responses from our polity mm. towards your skits that you've put out there when you're speaking the truth. Not yet. That's a simple answer. To go in depth, uh, I think comics or comedians have a special privilege or opportunity to say sensitive things in funny ways and get away with it easier than other people or other artists can. If you think about it, because your song is jammed over and over and over again, and because it's slightly different, people might find it offensive. But if you're a comic and you put out a skit, like I did with my interview series, I was really hammering out some issues. You know, Even though there's a high chance you might lose the message in the, mis in the multitude of the humor and the laughter, I haven't really faced any backlash yet, and I hope I don't, because I, I have a think tank that I bounce ideas off. Do you think do you find this offensive? No, I don't. I know. Okay, fine, majority, plan. I go ahead. And sometimes I just go with my gut feelings. But I think being a comic, it gives me the opportunity to douse tension when the humor is solid. Even the people that will come for you would have laughed and like, this guy is just a useless man, you know. <laughs> See what he did. Now you have used it. But then later you're like, hmm, message there. But you put it out in such a subtle way that they kind of accept you. So. Now, switching into comedy full time, mm. did you at, at any point nurse any fears? Now, the people who mm. initially thought comedy would not be as thriving a business as it is now, and people who were afraid of being taken for granted or taken on serious, did you face such segregations from family members, or were you afraid at any point? So, yeah, so the thing is, uh, first of all, I didn't come into comedy because I wanted to come into comedy. I just discovered I was doing stuff, and people found it funny. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I love to see you smile. I love to see you happy. I love to see you you know, uh, laugh. I don't know why exactly you're laughing, but look, I'm just being me. And if that makes you happy, hey, let's do it, whatever. So that, at the back of my mind, is my driving force, not necessarily rewards or, or comments or commendations from people. So that kept me on, because I'm not really looking for it. I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> I'm just expressing myself. The internet or social media gave me a free and easy platform, you yeah? know, outside of traditional media, TV, radio, print, to, you know, because even on Twitter, you, I, I do humor with text. So uh, I, I, that gave me the opportunity to be able to put myself out there. But um, talking about, um, what was that second part you asked again about? Uh, Family members, did you feel any so, of them so, take so, you on serious at some point? No, because from my background, being a scientist, having done my master's degree and having vast array of opportunities ahead of me, people didn't really see that way early because I was also a filmmaker. But of course, every now and then, I run into people who just never take me seriously. It's, 
It's a bit of a low moment, no matter what. Even if I'm hungry, I'm telling you just fine. Anything you can afford, you can. My God, look at his face. He's so funny. I'm starving. Give me food, but you know. Yes, sometimes people do take me on seriously. And it's right. great football, that's the job, as long as they're happy. Okay, we have a video. You recently dropped a single, yep. Shaking Tables. Yeah. You know, one of the tables, you've shaked several of you've shaken. What's the correct word? Shaked? Shuku. Shuku shake. Shuku shake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, have, we also have information that you attended the royal wedding. So let's take a look at the clip of Frandonga at the royal wedding. When we come back, we'll be speaking some more to him and also looking at his latest single. Dr. King was right. Yeah, he was. We must discover love. Mm, mm. The redemptive power of mm. love. What? And when we do that, tell them we will make of this old world a new world. Amen. Wakanda forever. My brother. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my main man, Prince Harry. <laughs> How was the wedding? That was tight. It was tight. Man. You all saw it. You all saw it online. Like, <laughs> woo! Woo! <laughs> wasn't easy like wow I was, I was going up and down all over the internet i trekked i'm all over the internet <laughs> i was monitoring things and things were monitoring me <clears throat> next question <laughs> <laughs> so, this is your pink outfit the one that we saw at the in the real wedding video mm. you always carry on the persona of an unemployed youth maybe the lazy nigerian mm. youth what inspired you to start your comedy with a signature outfit so i wanted to express the challenges of one too many people I had run into that I knew as friends, family, colleagues, every now and then run into them who spend a lot of time and effort going to school only to come out and discover that the educational system had really failed them. They, didn't, they weren't really equipped to fit into the job market, not really because of their fault, sometimes because of the, the background home or because of financial status or because of their um, you know, uh, exposure and realized that there weren't too many jobs out there, one, and a lot of people had also discovered didn't get the jobs they would have gotten because they had low self-esteem at the point of job interviews, then they didn't do their homework. So all these issues were things I wanted to address. The struggling Nigerian youth mm. who is a victim of a failed educational system and who also has a few faults of his own by not preparing himself for wealth opportunities. So that was things I wanted to bring attention to. So basically talking about the fact that we, are, we have unemployability problems, employability right. problems and unemployment problems yes. as well. Very yes. interesting. Thank you for the fantastic work Thank that you, you do with that, regards to that. Now, Frank recently dropped a single, Shaking of Tables. I don't know where that slang originated from on social media. But if you find the origin, please do well to let us know how it came about. But for now, let's take a look at Frank's latest music release. Oh. We are shaking. This day we are shaking. This day we are shaking. People will fall down. How can people people get to download the song? So it's on SoundCloud. Uh, just go to my page at frankdonga underscore on Instagram. Same on Twitter at frankdonga underscore. Go to my bio. The link is right there. Free download from SoundCloud. What's the song about? The phrase. This table you are shaking. I just, every now and then I'll go to social media, especially Twitter and, or Instagram. Somebody makes a statement like, hmm, I wonder why people would just, I say, hey, bro, this table you are shaking has a lot of, I'm like, wow, this phrase, people use it very often. I was like, important. So I wanted to do a social commentary about things in the society, addressing different issues from politics to, you yeah. know, uh, personal finance, uh, living within your means, you know, being a slave queen and living your, uh, all those other things. So I had to, you know, do a call, response, refrain thing, structure it in such a way that, you know, you can also groove to it. <laughs> and what has the response shaking. been like so far? Crazy, amazing. I'm like, I'm surprised people. people actually, like, first of all, the groove is tight. People love the groove. I agree. It's a jam. I mean, it's a jam I, for days. I, I can't even lie. <laughs> so, like I told you, I have a big musical back background. So, I was particular about the sound. And then I write songs. So, I'm like, okay, write it in a way that people get the message, but they can also, like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling that groove, but he's talking to me. Like, he's taking, shaking my table, but. We're definitely playing this video for you tomorrow. So, make it a date with us, same time tomorrow. And we'll be bringing you the video of Frank Donga, Shaking Tables. I'm to enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.